So let's see. Okay, we're live now on YouTube. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, As-salatu wa salam wa ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now the trick is, can you share your screen on the YouTube live? Optimization. I don't think it has that option. Show all controls. Okay. Well, we'll just do it like that. And then we'll just maybe upload the Zoom later, just in case anybody has any chats or questions during the live on YouTube. <clears throat> okay. So let's see. Go back to Zoom. Bear with us, y'all, or bear with me. Do I show first check out? What's that? So what do you want to show first? Um first show. so the first thing I want to talk about is let's go ahead. Well, let's let's go ahead and do the audio, I guess. We'll do the do the angry mad caller. <laughs> Get that out the way. <laughs> Since that's been highly requested. Uh, yes, of course. Not to <laughs> Brother uh, Nasser, I want to say his name. Uh, Idris, uh, Idris Nasir, I believe but, it was. No, it was a mini display. That was uh, ironically one of the, yeah, ironically one of the greatest audience of all time. <laughs> uh, share screen, share response. Okay. Uh, and understand something. I did not threaten you. I don't have any reason to threaten you. You're nobody. You don't even, you don't even show up on the Richter scale of, of somebody that we would waste time with or that I would waste time with. Okay, wait. Um, because we want to break this down, uh, you can't say that like we're not someone or Jocker isn't someone that you wouldn't spend time on and didn't spend time on him or go, go out of your way. It's, like, it's not like Jocker like, messaged you. Um, we were just in a group chat, right? And then after you guys kicked Jocker off the group chat, you then went out of the way to go find out where, where he was in the group chat, scroll up, click on his name, find his name, then message him several times, and then proceed to leave a, leave a voice note about like, like why you not on, on scale. Mm-hmm. Currently, Jaffer is the most important person in your life. <laughs> you know, understand you, you spend your life uh, slandering others. Say, Slander. You don't understand what you're doing to yourself? <laughs> you know, you know what kind of place you're putting Putting yourself in the, all the fitness that you cost, all the 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 uh, the, 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 the you okay. Uh, this is another thing too is that so he talks about all the fitness you cost, right? But then he just goes back to his first point and his only point uh, about you slander off the date. Um, he, he provides zero examples to this. He just keeps saying you slander off the date. Um, and you know all the fitness you causing inside of the world. You uh you slander off the date like. <laughs> He, he has no other points to stand upon, and then he doesn't know himself whether whether Giovanni and Rafa. See, the thing is, it's like I, I, they, it's the same repetitive thing that they all say when they they just really have nothing to say. So, I yet for how many years we've been doing this, every person that makes that claim, we say, okay, how did we slander them? So for slander, that means that we're telling stuff about somebody in a public manner. That is not true. And not one person has been, been able to uh, point out any time that we have actually slandered anybody in TMOA. It has it still, challenge is still out there. And this whole thing about Akhla Bay, we got to touch on that a little bit just because this, this is one of the things that holds up a lot of people in TMOA. First, it doesn't matter whether Mubarak Jelani or his family or whatever, if they're Akhla Bay or not. If they are transgressors, oppressors, uh, people of innovation, people of shirk, it does not matter. It does not matter. Their their, their bloodline, even if they were Ahle Bayt, does not change anything. does not give them a pass to go against the Quran and the Sunnah. Also, if you go to anybody that has any familiarity with Pakistan, India, and Muslims over there, they will tell you that people over there that claim to be Ahle Bayt are a dime a dozen. They're all everybody claims to be a Saeed 
everybody claims to be Ahl Bayt. Whether it's true or not, Allah knows best. But most of them are not actually Ahl Bayt. And I'm pretty sure that um, Mubarak Jalani and his family are actually not Ahl Bayt. They'll come up with scrolls, they'll come up with papers, and all these different things that supposedly proves that they're Ahl Bayt, but it's actually not verified by, any, by, by anybody or anything. So, you know, Allah knows best whether he's Ahl Bayt. That is, you do not foul somebody just because they're Ahl Bayt. That is a Shiite belief. If you're a Shiite, go ahead. Okay. You know, and then and then if you're if you're gonna, you know, just ignore all the wrong that they do because they're Ahl Bayt. Um, that's on you, but we don't have to. Um, being Ahl Bayt does not cause us not to speak out against the, the wrongs that um, your fake Sheikh has been doing for the last 40 years and now that his family continues to do. And just to piggyback off Dr. Antisto from our good brother, Ms. Ms. Uh, who said, like, the Prophet Muhammad's uncle didn't escape hellfire, even though, you know, that's literally, we know for sure that that's his uncle, all right? Mm-hmm. There's not like, okay, maybe he's not his uncle, we know for sure that. That is the time was on and he didn't escape from the hellfire. And he was like, just please, you know, uh, take a shahada now um, yep. and to his dying breath, right? I'll see if you're cool. He didn't do that, all right? But he's still in hellfire, all right? Uh, that's something we know, right? Uh, and so, Mubar Jelani, even if he is off the bait, right? All the sins and the transgressions um, and all the things that he's done, uh, the halalas, the force breaking up of marriages, him quote unquote working with the jinns, mm-hmm. uh, happens, like all the stuff he's done. I don't care who you are. Uh, there is there is no living is that's not you can uh, uh, dealt in. Period. So yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Back to <laughs> back to do this. Even if you didn't want to be part of the tomato, you didn't like something that was done to you. Live your life, man. Go, go live your life. Do whatever you want to do. You, your your life is worth. So so. Pause it right here. <laughs> so it's the same old thing. It's like everybody that speaks out against Tim all of a sudden they like they stopped having a life, right? They just they stopped have. So y'all got to get y'all story straight. Either we're being funded by the Wahhabi Zionist FBI whatever, right? And this is our job is to like be to like tear down and destroy Tim away which that would be our life, or we actually have no life and we're bums on the streets that just happen to have computers, online, uh, live, Zoom accounts and all these different things that this is how, you know, we get to, because we have no life. We have nothing better to do. Um, You know, I would challenge everybody that says this to actually, this brother, you go get a life. What is your life? What are you doing? You know what I mean? That, That you actually called me to go on this rant about, him away. Yes, we we people have left the Jamaat. And then the other thing he mentioned that he alluded to is that for some reason, the only only way that you could possibly have um, a problem with Tim Way if, if is something happened to you, right? Or yeah. you didn't like that something happened to you. Nothing happened to me. Nothing happened to the majority of people that are in Tim Way. People left without anything happened to them, and then things happened to them after they left. You know, so just yeah, just more yeah. bull crap. Yeah, because nothing happened to me either. Like uh, I think who Mark said this. I'm like the like I'm the son of the team away aristocrats. All right. Like, so, <laughs> so, so like so, so like nothing happened to begin with Jamal. I promise. You. Like when folks are telling their stories about what happened in their account, I'm like that's terrible. How many are they have to look any of that? Because it was pretty spooky out in the cult. All right. Yep. If I do it back from cult, I could probably kick up my out All right. So, 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 <laughs> these are fact tells. <laughs> Yes, let's pause it right here. Let's pause right here. We we know yes, this is a good point he brings up. You know the tree by its fruit. So let's talk about mm-hmm. the fruit of Tamaway, right? Let's talk about the tree first. <laughs> All right. So we have a tree. We have a tree that a big um, tree. very big tree. So you would say it wouldn't be it was it wasn't a, a, a healthy tree. It was a very oversized tree, very poor roots, it, it couldn't survive. stand. Yeah very dismal and that it died and rotted at the end um and then the fruit it produced is other big ugly disgusting trees and fruit um mm-hmm. you know people that know, after smaller younger trees for some reason yeah 
So, I mean, <laughs> it's just people carrying on the same old things. Like, what is the fruit that TMOA has produced? How many scholars has TMOA produced? Zero. Well, how many? Well, he's, he's a, I'm about to tell you, though. Well, well, how many? We'll see. Okay. He'll, he's going to get into that. But we know for a fact there's zero scholars. Allegedly, one Hafiz will we'll give you that, even though that's not even true. Y'all didn't produce them. One Hafiz. I didn't that at all. Right. I'll give him a doctor, but not really. Right. <laughs> because, like, because, like, um, at the end of the day, right, if, okay, so just because, like, I live in part of the community, right, if I leave that community to, to go learn things, how, how are you claiming that, right? I mean, I guess you, you can, like, for, for productive man, right? I've been doing my whole life, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and he didn't, like, Go to doctorate school in Pakistan under Jelani or like under K2 to become a, a Iranian therapist or whatever the hell he is. Right. Like, he had to go to actual medical school, actually study his ass off. Right. Uh, he didn't just like make believe it up. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know like how, I guess you can explain it, but like that's not um, Jelani teaching that. And right. if there's only one in 40 years, that's a terrible, that's, and, that's a terrible here, average. Here, that, um, in 80 years, we're going to have two. Here, here's a here's a good here's a good example, and it's, it's said directly from one of the Tamoy doctors themselves, Doctor uh, Bowers, Omar Bowers, and he was you know after you become a doctor, like you know then they start putting you front stage, you're giving speeches at whatever, right? So he was giving a speech at a retreat, and he gives <laughs> he says in his speech he says, in order to be successful, sometimes you have to leave Tamoy and go do what you got to do. <laughs> And then come back after you become successful. And he says that oh. during his speech. And then, um, true. and then Ahmed, he he gets on the mic right after him and says, like, pretty much says, "Don't listen to what he just said." <laughs> <laughs> no, but like that's one hundred percent true. And listen, if if you've been part of the the Jamaat for uh, a long time, right? You see this all the time where they, they discourage you from doing X, Y, or Z, right? Mm-hmm. But if you ignore them and then proceed to go to X, Y, and Z. If you if that is successful, if, if you like have benefit from that, it will come back to you like please, please, like yeah. like we see it with Hadith Day Williams, right? When Hadith uh went out because you know social media it was banned for a long time, right? Yeah. No one was supposed to even be on the internet, right? Yeah. Hadith goes, right? That's his own thing, right? Against the, the uh, guys of the community. Um and he goes, that's his own thing. He goes and finds his his Islam, learns, right, and becomes you know, the popular Hadith Williams the internet figure, right? Yeah. And then what happens? I need to come back, please. You're from you're part of us. We can use you to help push our own platforms. And I just like no, like this is this is my thing too. They will quickly try to use you if you yep. become popular, right? Yep. Like with a meeting graduate from college, Doctor Tia's daughter, Samash Salah, about a year ago. Like, what are you talking about? You like, know what? We're not, we're not doing this. And here's here's another challenge for TMA members. Give me one successful person that has followed the Maje- the Jelani. Um, playbook, <laughs> right? The, the 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 playbook followed all the rules of TMOA and has been successful, because all the people that have been successful, whether they're doctors, the lawyers, um, they have all f- disobeyed Mubarak Jelani and the TMOA rules to get where they're at, right? Because here's one school: one, you're not allowed to go to public school. That's one. Two, females are not allowed to go to college unless they go to college in class with their husbands. That's two. And three, no females are allowed to do anything in a medical profession. That's that's a rule they put on. There, it's haram for women to work, work in the metal field. This is what Mubarak Jelani has said, yeah. right? So, Making things haram that are haram. so name me one, name me one female or or one male that got successful by going to homeschool, right? Getting married before he went to college, right? Living on the land. No name, name, name me one person. You won't be able to find that one person. Yeah, that's a, a terrible play. But like every play you guys run is just that exact, exact type of flaw. Every every play, you're know, freaking type of flaw. Every play, I'm talking about, uh, you just gotta do it. And the, the, the people that are gonna leave the play behind and get a new play, but well, I mean, but the idea was there though. From it was implemented inside of their head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Oh yeah. Well, okay. Intrigued okay. by the fruit that it bears. This is a jamaat full of carters. No, none of that is true. None of that. If we, there is if, like one of each tops. Um, and uh, the two that you guys claim the most, I think in here, guess what, guess what, guess what they went. They didn't go to Pakistan. Yeah. Went right to Georgia. All right. So you got like, sure, David may be a part of it. Um, but I think in did not, def, they, 
I promise you, they didn't learn how to be put on from July. I can guarantee you that. Guarantee uh, that. <laughs> guarantee <laughs> that. <laughs> I don't know, Chief. Yeah, and and to say like just like you said, just totally false. To say it's a jamaat full of these people, we can count on our two hands all the <laughs> people that you mentioned. We can count. That bought by as such. Yeah, and and. So how's that full? That's not full. There's 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 thousands of more members that are not that. You have do have a jamaat full of, according to your own Khalifa, a jamaat full of fornicators. You do have a jamaat full of criminals. You do have that. Something he is proud of though. It's like that that uh you know that kind of fits his motive because he was the you know a fornicator and, and a criminal. Yeah. And it goes directly onto himself. He's like, I mean. You guys are terrible people, but I mean, I am too low key. <laughs> like, just, just think about the stuff that is like him. You can't wear these clothes because he's in your house watching you. Like, all right, creepy old, old too. What, yeah, what the hell is yeah, this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, my house. Not watching me and my wife, freak. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine me? Can you imagine me calling you up when you're married and be like, you know, Armor, you should tell your wife to, to dress because you know I see I see y'all when y'all ain't dressed. Like what? I'm like, uh, <laughs> you better not be looking at your daughter. All right, what the hell you got going on? Like, right. whenever I heard that for the, the fr- even when I was on the juice, when I heard that those stories, like of that, of okay, I'm like, why the hell is he looking at people naked? Why would why is he looking at people in their private quarters? Well, even if he did have that ability, why would he do that? That's like the Invisible Man, right? Like you're going around creeping on people, sneaking on people. Like, come on, man, what the hell? <laughs> And the all the madrasas all over the water become educated in Islam. But you actually think you can put that light out. You actually think you can put that light out. Gosh. The people, we feed people. We... <laughs> yeah, you feed people. Okay. You feel the person. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. So, <laughs> this, is, this is absolutely funny because, yes, it is technically true that they do their donate money overseas to help feed people, which is great. I'm doing all right. Mm-hmm. But, if you're part of a jamaat, right, um, and you've ever been to a jamaat function, these niggas do not be you. The people <laughs> in the community, <laughs> right? You have to put elsewhere to get fed. Like, this is this is the problem. It's like you're like, oh, you're trying to be, be outwardly like, okay, well, um, outwardly we we are so, so giving, but inside in the community, you're treated like, like garbage. Like, yeah, I've been to so many eats uh, during my lifetime mm-hmm. where literally there is no food. And you, as a kid, I mean, you're just walking up and down the land anyway, yep. there's no food. And then you freaking, after nine hours of not, not eating, right, and being at the shrine, you, you leave <laughs> the South Carolina land or the Red House land or the, the, the land in New York, and you go find food because every time, yeah. that's really what happens. You have to like, like most of all the land gets food. And look, and so like for it. all these years that people's been sending money over there and a lot of people, like there's different different ideas of what people had that the money went to. Some people believe it went to like feed orphans and some people believe that the money goes to fund jihadi. Some people believe it went to whatever. Right. We know the majority of the money went to fund Mubarak Jelani and his family. But we we just seen they posted it on their social media. They posted when they actually were giving out the little bags of rice. Right there. They, they had one big like maybe like a 50 pound bag of rice. And then they're giving people Ziploc bags of rice. Right. Which, and I'm pretty sure the people in Team One was like, oh, Alhamdulillah, look at all the good we're doing. And Alhamdulillah, like there, there's, you know. R2F, which has, you know, a couple dozen people in it and the people that are handling like the charity stuff that's doing different charity initiatives, like dozens and dozens of 50 pound bags of charity going to people in Pakistan, like that they're, 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 they're like enough to feed a family for a month. Yeah. So like, come on, like people like wake up to this, like they bought one bag of rice for literally probably like three bucks, divvied it out. Right. They're out there in slides and stuff. They're like they're, they're totally out of their element, even in their own country. And these people, you see them taking the bags of rice like, what is this? <laughs> but, yeah, you, you know, guys, you guys feed people. Sure um, you do. <laughs> um, you guys feed them, folks, right? That's great. But that's the equivalent of like, oh, it's Trump went freaking to um, uh, for, for a was like, shooting Like, like, Kobe. Like, that's good, bro. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, it's just it's right. really sad though. As, as we get more into this, it's really sad how diluted, like it, it's you, like okay, it's one thing 
to lie to somebody else, right? It's 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 bad. It's bad to lie to somebody else. But it's even worse if you're lying to yourself. So if he's lying to himself and he actually believes all this stuff, it's it's really it's really sad that you know people are still caught up into this this uh this whole this whole dream world of of TMOA. Well, I mean, if you, if you spent your entire life believing it, right? And uh, this is an elder brother uh, that, that, we, that we know now. Mm-hmm. If you spent your entire life believing it. I mean, it's hard for you to just stop now. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, if you stop now, then you're wrong. And it's tough to admit you're wrong. Yeah. I understand. Yep. You actually think you put that light out. The people, we feed people, we, we distribute money, we take care of people all over the world. But to you, that's something to slander and to find <laughs> fault with. You're sick, man. Sick. <laughs> you gotta be sick just to spend your entire life trying to find something wrong with somebody else. Well, just going, if you want, if you don't want to do it, it's mine. There's, there's, it's, we didn't spend much time finding. It's all right there in the open. There's a lot of wrong with Tim Way. You guys believe in Shirk. Your Sheikh taught you that he was the same as God. Like, you guys make tawaf around uh, broken down masjids. You guys said that Islamburg and Islamburg, Islamville in the United States of America was more holy than the Kaaba. Like, there's a lot of wrong. Your, 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 your Sheikh married teenage girls. And then actually, like prostituting them out with halal marriages, you have a female imam. There's a lot wrong. We don't have to go looking for it. It's right there in your face. It's sad that it's you. Not it. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Lisa. Go ahead. Go live your own life. Start a new jama. Start a new jama. Uh, okay, so just, just 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 real quick, right? Um, I don't think that Jaffer's trying to start his own jama. I could be wrong. Jaffer, you can correct me. But a lot of people seem to have this idea that Jaffer is like he is trying to overthrow the Jamaat and starting his own Jamaat. Like uh, that girl who was um, trying to make you heard like Tim Pazu, she was like, uh, uh, you're very knowledgeable and smart and handsome, and you can be uh, your own chick somewhere, and you, you can start your own Jamaat. I'll support you, but like, leave us alone. <laughs> Oh yeah, all, all my all my Talibs will have to watch anime every day. <laughs> oh gosh, it's it's just so it's and it just shows the mindset that like even they can't even think of other people outside of the context of TMOA. So it's like okay, I have to be in a jamaat. I have to have a leader and someone tell me everything I'm doing and believe that you know all my sins are gonna be forgiven for being in a special group. But then when people leave. And they leave that that fishbowl. They think that oh, they have to be in another fishbowl. They have to go be in another jamaat. Like I don't know how many people like they say this thing. Like, oh yeah, just go find another shit. Go find another jamaat. Go start your own jamaat. No. You know what I mean? No, 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 and no, no, no. and then they also like like oh, they must they must not have a life outside of TMOA because I can't see myself having a life outside of TMOA. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Projecting their insecurities on, onto you um, because they feel trapped inside of this fishbowl and yeah. they don't want to swim in the in the vast ocean of Muslims. Right? <laughs> oh no, what will I do? Yeah. Uh, listen, you, listen, it's gonna be tough, right? Um, and believe me, I'm going through this. Uh, you're gonna have to learn how to swim again, right? Uh, because the stuff you learn in the Jamaat, all of that is wrong. All of it. There's, there might be one thing that like might like the only thing that's that's correct in in the Jamaat is the Shahada, all right? After that, after that point, it's like, all right, you got to learn all that over again. It's very one. Yeah. Um, so, what's your best luck? All right. Yeah. And yourself, instead of trying to find people disaffected to my members, half of them never even was around or participated. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. That is utter BS because you're, you're literally messaging Joffrey, who knows more about your shit than you. And <laughs> described to you last episode on his interview that he was personally, like, he was able to uh, talk to Yolani and say, hey, I want to uh, transcribe your lectures. He was approved directly from Yulani to do, do so. And then, uh, like, Mubarak was also the administration, right? Yeah. And then me, you know, everyone knows who my parents are. Uh, so, yeah, like, I was babysat by Yulani when I was one years old. So, uh, yeah, talk to me. Right. But I hope you didn't change your diaper. Oh, not too. <laughs> <Anyway. laughs> For Metham, there you go. Listen, has he been a shot Well, it, we... Body? We just found out that he's been kicked out of the Jamaat several times. <laughs> so clearly he isn't the best Jamaat member, but he yeah. is the best Jamaat member. And believe in all this this uh, malarkey and, and, and jargon he's throwing, you know, he, he would never have been kicked out of the 
he yep. would be a stand up ideal team way member who follows every move and always pays 10%. And always goes to retreat and never has his family around him. Never goes to college. My that, brother, he right? it's it's um it's he's basically what they call a redeemer is that they're yeah. on the outskirts and they do whatever they can to still make it seem like they're the downest Jamadis, right? But even though like they don't follow anything, they don't listen, but then when they come around the Eads and whatever programs, they're like, Yeah, Jelani, 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 I'm the best talib, but then they get kicked out, you know. Two, two, three weeks later for not paying their membership dues or whatever. Like, like and, and you have people that the, 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 I can at least respect a, like a, a Jamadi that actually follows what Mubarak Jelani says. Cause at least you, believe, die hard, yeah. you know what I mean? But you have these people like, yeah, I believe in the shake, the shake's the best, but then they're talking to you. They have a blunt in their hand. They have braids in their hair. They have jeans on their kids are going to public school and they're married to Christians. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, you you go ahead, buddy. <laughs> Sir, you definitely listen to his teaching and, and uh, you know watch his his uh, boring lectures. All right, way to go! I'm sure he's after all those baby days. <laughs> oh yeah, well, yeah. Okay. and your kids probably watch TV, which is haram for Jelani. I mean, his kids did all that stuff, but not doesn't probably use uh, dark time. You probably try to convince people. Your last time, man. You're a clown. <laughs> This was nothing but a. Shasta never brought anything but love to me. Out of BS. That is out of BS. Yeah. I can guarantee you that Umdor was not having a good time and feeling love that she was in the Halala. Guarantee you. Yeah. I can guarantee you that. I can guarantee you that all the families that he broke up were having a good time. I can guarantee you all the yeah. people he forced to go overseas not having a good time. Yeah. I can guarantee you when he, he told uh when he told Abu Muhammad uh Uncle Uncle Ibn's best friend to go kill him was having a good time. Guarantee mm-hmm. you. Guarantee you. No. So, he brought. Uh, he, did he? Was it love he, that he was trying to bring when he told? Uh, Hussein Abu Bakas, um, Abu Bakr and them, then the whole crew to go deliver love bombs to the Hindu temple in Canada. Was that what it was? It was like a love bomb. It was gonna, you know, it was gonna blow up in glitter and rainbows and flowers and yeah, candy. It was gonna, fl- yeah, is that what was gonna happen? No, they're gonna die. <clears throat> the hockey stuff, right? and, and we didn't even know Islam until they got here. Okay, uh, don't ever say we as a collective. You yeah. can say you, you cannot speak for everyone else. Yeah, right? if you didn't. Didn't, didn't, didn't know your Islam, and then you ain't good at my ego, you dig. I, I can assure you, you don't. All right, yep. so you still need to learn your Islam. So you still learn your Islam. Because yep. if, if, you, if you knew your Islam in the very basics, um, you would say, okay, this is wrong, so I can't follow this. Yep. And, like, and this is what makes it so funny about like the, the like whole aspects of the Jamaat, right? Is that at the very basic level of just understanding Islam, right? Um, when you first become Muslim, right, you say, there is no God but a law, right? Mm-hmm. The is so the first thing you said, right? The very first thing you say when you first a new jihadah, that's the first thing that they said. Um, and then if someone said, Oh no, there's two gods, or God has partners, no, that's wrong. Because I just read this. That's the first thing I just said when I came with them. So that's wrong. Yeah. So the very like the very basic level, like that foundation is already destroyed. Yeah. If, if you believe that Jelani is, is this great, pious, uh, peaceful, loving, doing all mm-hmm. this stuff, because he's not. Um, and everything yep. he says uh, about the Sikh Sultan and how, how he's this divine person and reading from the books and stuff like that, um, if you hear that, if you hear him say things like, because this brother's been around for a while, so he definitely heard you know, say, if you don't fear law, fear me. Yep. So you, you you heard that and I'm like, okay, well, I mean, that was kind of crazy, but like, <laughs> he's a shape, he's a real deal. No, yeah. he's not. And then, like, common sense, just leave you because you, you like the guy. The, and the thing is, too, like, you had a, a important point, like, I've heard m- multiple people when they try to like debate or, you know, defend Tim away, they'll say stuff like, um, who are you? You're, you just, you just know basic Islam. <clears throat> Jake Jelani's a scholar and this and that. And I'm like, well, you saying, <laughs> you saying I'm just like a, a basic uneducated Muslim is actually an argument against you because if me with my very limited knowledge can totally shred your whole belief system, Without you even giving one rebuttal, that shows that you're 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 on a very very weak foundation. Because me, a layman, can destroy the scholar Mubarak Jelani's whole belief set, all of his teachings, very easily. Any but any, my a twelve year old can come and do the same thing. So that's just an argument against you. It shows that you that your your belief system is full of crap. I percent, and that you're just like you. The person that you believe to be able to do this is a, it's like basically we we'll to my lie on his resume and cv all right mm-hmm. and then when he had to, to actually do, do the job it was like i mean i could 
do it for you, but like <laughs> I don't really want to do it at this time. Just, if if I had to, I could. Yeah. But okay, man. Uh, so you, it says here um, in second part, moving the moon. Uh, you can do this, uh, <laughs> can we need to tie uh, the chain. Can you here, please move the moon yeah. tonight? Uh, it says here. Part three, animal tricks. You can become a bird. Uh, can do that, sir. <laughs> like, none of that is true. It says here that you are the sixth spark of a law's light, and the law created you. Um, and I can call you a law. That's that's false. <laughs> so, so, like, so, so, yeah. so, it's it's just a, a a sad reality for you to face that yes, this person did lie to you. I understand, like, um, because when we were in that, who was Shaq Jelani room, right? Like, mm-hmm. And people they were going over their accounts of like. The one time that they met Jelani, or the one time that like he was in the area, or he was in the U.S., and they heard about the story of Jelani, right? Yeah. This is a, a lot of the folks. They were around Jopper's age, right? Mm-hmm. They met, they may have met him one time when they were five. Yeah. And they're forty years old now, talking about the one time they were five and how good it felt. Like you guys are weird. Yeah. Um, you never like you never met him again. You never saw him again. Well, you it, didn't know you. It's like uh, it's like groupies. It's like it's it's literally yeah. like groupies. Like when I when I was in Michigan, I met so many people. I met. I met Jimmy Carter. I, w- I met um, Harry Ford. I met all these different people, right? And you don't hear me be like, man, yeah, I met Jimmy Carter, and he was so nice and respectful and just a, such a great man. It's like, okay, I met the dude, shook his hand, and that was it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, But you guys make this incredible, like, story, and, like, this had so much meaning and impact on your life. And literally, he doesn't know you who, who you are, and you don't know who he is. It's crazy. And uh, whenever we, I think on Thursday, I do want to like briefly cover some of the stories that they had in that who was taking line. It was like, man, there's simply <laughs> just no way you go from this this much. Like, and there he was. I picked out of the corner, and then he's like, "Come sit here, child." And, like, all right, me, Yoda. Yeah, and, <laughs> and Amr, and you and you know, like you're into psychology, so you know how like the memory works. You know, ninety yeah. percent of that story is just made up. They just like Not they either. just. They were probably told by the parents that Mubarak Jelani came over to the house one time and they're like, oh, yeah, you're a little kid. And at first when they heard it, like, oh, I don't remember. But then over these yeah. years, they started just creating this story. Yeah, I looked around the corner and I just seen so much Noor and he gave me a piece of candy. And it was just so okay. like you made most of that up. That That's 100 percent true, like I said. And another thing, too, is that uh, there is some like there is some psychology that kids don't actually form a full, complete like memory until like age like seven. Right. Mm. So before that. It gets filled in with like parts of the story that you may have forgot or that someone told you about. And also, you try to, generally as a kid, you try to make everything rose covered. So it seems like it was a good time. Mm-hmm. That's why kids generally don't like be depressed that much uh, right. until later on. Ah. Like, man, what happened? Um, so as a kid, right, you, you're probably four or five years old in a trailer somewhere that's making falling apart, but you're like, oh, I had this great time. In reality, you didn't, but you didn't know any better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Uh, You understand, man? But not you. No, you waste your whole life. You'll see. You'll see in the end. <laughs> see, see, and, and so this, 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 this is like on to his, like when he was talking to me on the phone, he was really talking Big Willie, throwing threats out there, okay. talking about he's going to see me, I'm going to get mines, and this and that. And then when I called his they threats. They that. Yeah, I called his threats empty. I called him out on it. <clears throat> and, um. That's when he sent that thing in the beginning. It was like, just to be clear, I didn't threaten you. I wasn't threatening you. <laughs> well, whatever, dude. Like, <laughs> stand behind your words. If you if you really believe in it, just stand stand behind it. But this guy, is, is, it's sad. Yeah. These guys are silly, and he just represents the like stereotypical blind following TMOA member. That uh, whole idea of like seeing Joffrey in person sounds cool until he's like, you guys are like, he's a karate kid. TMOA uh, soldiers out there, like, please don't try to come fight me. I'm too old for that. Like, I, I you know, I, but I, if you do, I'm going to defend myself appropriately. And a lot of those best what happens, but please don't. I got to go to work usually the next day. I don't feel like being sore. I don't feel like hurting nobody. Like, come on. 
So let's go on to the, do you have the actual article um, that I posted in the room? If, if not, I can bring it up. Hold on, just freaking playing this dossier video in the background. My ears are losing. All right, um, the article <laughs> in the R2F room or the other one? Um, it's in the R2F room. Okay, I got you. What's today? What's that? Uh, one second. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll, is it, I just okay. You can, okay, uh, is it the one? No, that's that's my name. It's like soy soy. What is it called? So it's um. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I see it. I see it. Okay, I got you. Share screen. Yeah, so this is the article. Um, we're, I'll, I'll post the link. We'll post a link in the description once the video uploads, so you guys can go read it yourself. But I just wanted to go through this, and go there's there's yourself. there's so many different things that are out there about Mubarak Jelani that's written by third parties. Like so, like the common common understanding is that when you're in TMOA is that Mubarak Jelani is this great sheikh in Pakistan. That ever he has all these talbs all over the world. And the only people that possibly speak bad about Tim Away or Mubarak Jelani are either um, angry, butthurt ex Jamaat members or Islamophobes, right? Like, you know, they, they claim that Ryan Morals is an Islamophobe and that all he wants to do is terror. Like, th this is what they do. But if they get their, their mind out of that, there's actually a lot of people, a lot of sources out there that actually have reported the truth about Mubarak Jelani. That, like, for instance, this article is written by um, Mubashir Bukhari. He's a Pakistani journalist. He's not an Islamophobe. He has nothing to do with anything. He's just a, 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 a unbiased third party who's actually going to report on Mubarak Jelani. <clears throat> and just a little background, Mubashir is the one that uh, uh, Shafat Jelani um, tried to uh, threaten. And Mubashir is actually an ex-boxer. And he's like, well, come on, bring it. <laughs> it never happened. <laughs> he's like, come on, you want, you want to bring it, bring it. So I'm just going to read some of the article. I might just go through the whole thing just so people can um, um, get get what's in here. Because it gives a better picture of, it's funny because people in TMOA actually don't know Mubarak Jelani's history. All they know is the story that, oh, he came from Pakistan. He was trained from, by Khalifa Ali in the heavens, and he came to America to guide Tim White. That's all they know about him. But this gets more into like his past and um, just gets shed some more light on who this this fraud actually was. So, yeah, um, Mubashir writes in a in a Pakistani newspaper, um, Jelani was arrested last week by intelligence agencies on suspicion of being behind the kidnapping of American journalist Daniel Pearl. So this is written all the way back decades ago when the whole Daniel Pearl situation. So he, he, he goes into a week, a week long grueling interrogation of Pierre Mubarak Ali Shah Jelani, who was arrested in connection with the kidnapping of Wall Street Journal, journalist, re, journal reporter Daniel Pearl, has failed to give intelligence agencies any breakthroughs, say sources. Insiders say interrogators are ready to believe now that Jelani knows nothing about the reporter and his captors. And then he says, he has been interrogated jointly by Pakistani and American investigators, but nothing has come out of it. An insider told TFT, officials sim fam uh, familiar with the interrogation say, so most of this is about the Daniel Pearl stuff, but I want to get into where he actually investigates Jelani himself. Um, he gets down into, okay, let's see. So he says, although it is unclear so far whether Jelani had any role in Pearl's abduction, he has certainly become notorious overnight throughout the world. TFT contacted various people, including some of his close relatives. So they he contacted Mubarak Jelani's close relatives to get some information on Jelani's background. His alleged links with jihadi groups and the organization Tanzim al fukra run by him. The group has been declared a terrorist organization by the U.S. State Department. So he goes, back in the 1970s, Jelani used to be vice president in the Punjab chapter of former Air Marshal Asghar Khan's Tahrik Istiqala. At that time, he was a clean-shaven man in his 30s. So clean, he wasn't even practicing the Sunnah. Hey, chopped off his beard. And at that time, he was not a religious figure whatsoever. Um, I did it. Being the um, eldest son of Pir Maksud Shah Jelani, an influential 
um, spiritual patron of the shrine of Hajat Mianmir in Lahore. So Mubarak Jilani's father used to be the caretaker or the sheikh of the sheikh of the Mir and Mir shrine, right? The sh and just so you guys know, that means his family's in the shrine business in Pakistan, right? This is where you get all these shrines in America, shrines in Pakistan, they're trying to establish their own shrines. So Mubarak, yes, it's just scams. Yeah, um, it's just scams. It's just like uh, like they have this shrine business going going on in India, Pakistan. Also, they have the like phone call business, right? Where they, because I was watching a video on this, uh, where like literally. The India and Pakistan, they have this like these giant buildings of just like call centers, mm -hmm. and there's like uh, 20 folks in the call center who are just actually on a call for just like vehicle purposes. Everyone else is scamming folks in America, in Europe, like hello sir, uh, and so you're making like I think I think it's like on average making like 13 million US a year, which is like a billion rupees. So so like everything is a scam. Yeah, <laughs> everything is a scam over there. Just it's just the same. money. Yep. So Mubarak was reckoned as the most <clears throat> important political opponents of then Prime Minister Zulfilkar Zul Ali Bhutto. This is why the Bhutto regime got three cases registered against him for leading anti-government processions under the defense of Pakistan rule, um, which is a nail. So basically he was he was trying to battle over there in Pakistani politics. Um, <clears throat> so, so then he goes, after his release, he was so he Mubarak Jalani was arrested. After his release, Jalani left for Saudi Arabia to escape the wrath of Mr. Butos. So all that, that whole idea about oh he was called to to Taif to do this thing. He actually was fleeing Pakistan because he didn't want to get arrested. Later, he migrated to the United States of America, where he process whatever preached and converted a large number of Americans, which isn't really accurate, he, especially African Americans to Islam. Only African Americans. Yeah, African Americans. Only African Americans. Americans and Matt Gardner, all right? His former, uh, or his, his later on, like, nobody. Right? Yeah. Uh, so after that, during his seven-year stay, he was here for seven years. That's it. Seven years in the U.S. He set up Madrasa there. It was, it was also in the U.S. that he set up his Fukra Jamaat. During this period, he contracted three marriages one with Pakistani women and two with African Americans, but remained issueless, basically without kids. Family sources told TFT that Jelani Tanzim has a large network in the U.S. and his followers still send him hundreds of thousands of dollars as endowments. He owns a large ancestral property besides a cinema hall in District Kasus near Lahore. So thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Is, is this was his Both family members? Out. So like they yeah. don't, his family members actually don't know the scope of it, but they're like they know he gets a lot of money from these African Americans in America, right? Um, <clears throat> but he says, but the family is not very sure about his links with any jihad jihadi groups, especially Jaishi Muhammad. One of his cousins told TFE that Jelani never held any office in any jihadi or religious group or party, and he said. His Tanzim is a group that preaches Sufism. He told and it's paid off. Yeah, it's paid off. That cousin, that cousin <laughs> had been paid off well. Right? <laughs> so, and he said he and he said, however, he did admit seeing Masood Azhar, whoever this guy is, at Mubarak Jalani's house on a couple of occasions. Interestingly, interestingly, some other relatives told TFT that Mubarak was an aggressive person always. Playing with toy weapons was his favorite hobby as a child. This is why his father, Maksud Al Shah, preferred to keep him away from the ancestral area of Myanmar village on the horse of Ramal. So his father was like, yeah. His, yeah, his father was like, yo, this dude, this kid's off it. Kind of stay away from the religious stuff. You need to get out of here. <laughs> right. That's very clear what he's saying. So um, he said his father was fearful of his aggression and thought he would get into brawls and create trouble for him. So later, Jelani's love of weapons took him to the arms business. He set up arms shop in Lahore, and many follow, followers dutifully camped there. When TFT visited Miranmir Village, so they went to Miranmir Shrine, where the, the family is, to see some more of his close relatives, none could, none could be found in the locality. They all went underground after the law enforcement agencies started raiding their houses. Um, most of them avoided answering questions about Jelani's past. Jelani's father, Said Maksud Ali Shah Jelani, died only last month while in his 80s. 
He is buried at the graveyard situated in the premises of the shrine of Hajat Myanmar. So just, just for y'all, Jamadis, if you're paying attention, his father was the sheikh of the shrine. Okay. And when you're a big guy in this in your own family, which is their families in charge of that shrine, he was buried inside of that area. Where was Mubarak Jelani buried? Somewhere down in the, in, the, in the country. Like they like, yeah, he ain't getting buried here. Go bury him somewhere else. And he started his own shrine, right? So pay attention to these things. Um Let's see. He had visited his grave. The caretaker of the graveyard said that no one from the family had come to visit the grave since Jelani's arrest a week ago. And he said, I fear they will not even observe his chehlam, probably some Pakistani big bit of stuff. I don't even know what that is, which is to be held on February 10th. Um, another cousin of Mubarak told TFT that Mubarak is not at all a religious hardliner. He's basically says he's not religious at all. <laughs> this, <laughs> like, <laughs> Isn't that what, like, uh, Mudassar told Sultan or, or, or Shabbat told Yeah, that's what Shabbat told yep. like, like, nigga, you know your practice yep. this, all right? Yep. Kind of pretend I like you. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on one second. Yeah, no, but, like, just, like, hearing all this stuff, um, <laughs> and this isn't, like, from, from some, 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 like, random person, like, this is actually in Pakistan, right? Yeah. Like, he's he's close to the source. His own family members. His own family members. And look, check out the quote. He says, he is he has been doing certain things, but he has been in this only for money, he said. <laughs> he said, however, he refused to give details of what Jelani has been doing. He would, because, you know, and you think about it, right? These are anonymous sources. They're family members. They're willing to say enough of the truth, but they still don't want to throw their family under the bus because he's like, yeah, I'm not going to tell you everything. But yeah, this nigga, is, this, this brother is just in it for the money, Right. So, and he said he also would not answer the question of why Jelani, a Brevely, so he's a Bear Valley, Brevely, right, would be linked with Diobandi and Wahhabi Jihadi groups. <laughs> other, okay. other sources, and that yeah, <laughs> other sources I too. Just, I, had a, I had a whole thing about him having like the arms, the arms deal. His, his father, I'm like, yo, like this nigga, a little terror, I can keep him away from stuff because like, like, he's yeah. up. So, like, I just can't, I can't understand why. Like, I never would have expected that Jelani would be the one. It's like he he gave you all the signs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so other sources too confirmed he was raking in money. He's raking in money. He was prepared wow. to play ball with some intelligence agencies. So he was prepared to be an agent, an informant, an asset for CIA, ISI, or whatever, whoever else would pay him, right? To do that. And also had links with the Taliban. Not because he believed in the creed, but because it served his purpose of making money. A source told TFT, um, uh, so U.S. officials believe the Briton, Richard Reed, commonly known as the shoe bomber, had links with Jelani. Okay, so that's the article. I just wanted to get it out there just so, but this is stuff, there's, there's so much stuff out there if you're willing to look at it that gives the real truth of who Mubarak Jelani was. He was a person that was not religious a person obsessed with guns and violence, a person that his own father said, get out of here. And everything that he's done that his own family members are willing to say, because like it has to be pretty bad for your own family members to basically throw you under the bus. Right. Because even like I got, I got family members that, you know, they're, they're, you know, you might not like them or they might be doing bad things. But at the same time, if some random reporter some comes and starts asking questions about them, I'm not just going to be dropping all the, the tea on them. Right. But he's that bad that they're like, yeah, this, this dude's just he's not religious. He's just in it for the money. Very clearly. So I just or, want, and, and, and this is this is another way to think about it. What if like his family was like trying to like sugarcoat it and that was the best thing to do. Like, just, like, 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 yo, he's yeah. like that bad. But, like, like, we were kind of like being easy on him. Like, he does way more, way more worse stuff than this. Like, exactly. exactly. That's, 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 so, yeah. so, yeah, you guys look online. It's the stuff's there. Um, if you really want it, if you, you can contact us if you want some more stuff. And we'll send it to you. But I just wanted that came up in our chat. So I just wanted to talk about it. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is, and we're going to try to do some more of this, is um, if you could bring up the, 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 the comment that the sister made on YouTube, if you have that, um, yeah. Jenna Gunther. Sorry. So we're going to try to do more of this, this where we um, where we cover or, or 
put out there some of the, the great comments or great ideas or great statements that are made, whether it be on the YouTube or on our Facebook or any of our social media. Um, we started doing some of that with our R2F chats, with just some of the stuff that we we talk about on a daily basis to try to share that with the people. But other people's voices need to be heard. And hopefully we can do some more of this. Um, but like this sister, Alhamdulillah, she made a very, um, very powerful statement. And I just wanted to cover it for the people so that, you know, they could see how this like it, it really hits home for a lot of people that are, you know, have woken up from the faucet of uh, of TMOA. So <clears throat> Jenna Gunter, assalamu alaikum. If you're watching, alhamdulillah for the statement. Keep them coming because you're saying a lot of good stuff. Uh, cousin, how are you doing, man? <laughs> so she says, I don't think R2F has been around for the length of anyone's lifetime. However, what TMOA members must understand is that when a person leaves the Jamaat, they spend years living their life. Like very clearly saying like people have lives and they live their lives outside of TMOA. As the years go on, and you're enjoying the, your new communities, where again, you got to connect with the Ummah. You got to connect with the, the Jama'at of Muslims, the, the Jama'at of Rasulullah and living a normal life while loving the deen from a clear perspective, you learn the deen more. And this is, this is so important because everybody has the same experience. As soon as you leave TMOA, you start interacting with other Muslims and you start learning the deen and you actually get a genuine love for Allah and Rasul and Islam and for Muslims in general, right? And this is why like this love actually turns people to look back at their past at TMOA and be like, you know what? I gotta say something because not only is it wrong what the people that I love and care about are going through by being a part of that cult, but I want them to have what I have now, right? Like it's, it's so, the grass is so much greener on the other side. Um, and then she says, as your knowledge of basic Islam increases, you realize that you can't sit and enjoy your life while thousands are being, still being fooled. And that's, that's right on the money. That's exactly what it is. It's like having a fridge full of food while you know your neighbors have not eaten. Mm. You have to say something. I loved being a TMOA member. And that right there, that line right there just hits home because everybody, for the most part, they love being in TMOA. Why? Because of their family, their friends, their social interactions, right? People generally did care for each other. But the problem is that the whole system's messed up and the whole belief system is shirk and you're being op oppressed and transgressed upon by by your leaders but when that met that line right there is talking about the, the people right and she says i had no experience that was so bad that i would leave again nothing happened to her nothing bad happened to her none of the politics could make me leave when i learned arabic and learned my religion and tried to bring tmoy practices to other muslims I was compelled to leave. And that's another aspect that usually happens is when, you know, you start, if you actually do believe in this TMOA stuff, and if you do believe in it, you sincerely believe in it, just like she said in the beginning of her message, you want other people to believe the, the stuff too. So when you go to yeah. other Muslims and talk to them about the seven sultans and all these different things, and you have no evidence for it from the Quran and the Sunnah, you look stupid and you feel stupid. And you realize like, oh, this isn't right. So you go to the truest, true, true religion of Islam. And she said, they have to bring at least some proof or accept what TMOA really is, a cult. I mean, powerful statement, powerful statement. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless her. So I think that's all it's we- It's not like a really important, okay, we're good. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so all I'm going to say today um, is a uh, shukran for leaving that uh, great message. Um, I, I think it's really important that folks actually take time to, to read that through and just process it. Um, and, you know, it reminded me uh, of, like, when I was in hospital school and the hospice had other kids who weren't part of the Jamaat come, right? And I was listening to the kids from the Jamaat try to explain these, like, uh, ideas of Jamaat and the things that he could do to the, the, the regular Muslim kids. And they're like, you got to crazy. And I'm like, uh... <laughs> I with the niggas, all right. <laughs> so, so, so like, like, yeah, it um, 
it seems crazy when it's said out loud. But yeah. like, if you're just a part of it, it it's, it's not crazy to you because this is all you know. Yeah. But when you're around other people, right? When you get a part of the larger body of Muslims, right? Um, and you start saying these things, and they're looking at you crazy. They can't all be wrong. Yeah. Right? Because uh, there, there's a hadith uh, where Prophet Muhammad says, like, mm-hmm. my, my ummah would never unite upon the process, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, that, that, like, scholars have said that to be like, go with the majority, right? Yeah. Go with the majority of Muslims and will never be, be wrong, right? Yeah. Not unite upon process. So, like, uh, this is something that, that she highlighted very well is that, like, you know, as she learned her Arabic and learned her Islam, if I had to take her, her team of teachings outside of the Jama'at, it yeah. was like, she seemed crazy to these people. But like, what are you talking about? This yeah. doesn't fit me, right? So that, that encouraged her, okay, well, let me ask you about her stuff. And it's it's a beautiful thing to have happen. Yeah. And I, I, I wish for everyone, like, you, you just, like, go actually learn your religion and take time to go study it. Like, um, the things you thought to do before, you're happy that, that they're wrong because the truth is so much better. Yeah, I'm going to love so we have some questions in the YouTube chat. Um, one of them is, are there any passages in Holy Quran that speaks on wearing jeans or jeans being forbidden? No, absolutely not. There's nothing like that in the Holy Quran nor in the Hadith. Um, and if you if just use a little common sense during the time of we're talking about desert Arabs, right? They, they weren't wearing um, jeans. There was probably not no material like that in, in their culture at all. So, yeah, no, nothing like that. Um, and also, uh, they... Uh... They weren't wearing the, the Pakistani shawar kameez, all right? Uh, I don't know who needs to understand this, but, like, this is a, this was a big thing in the Jamaat of, like, the Sunnah clothes was the shawar kameez, um, and, like, a ter- like, like and some Sunnah pants is what they called mm-hmm. it. Um, you can correct me if, if I'm wrong. Maybe we don't know, but there was very few Sahabas who actually, like, were Pakistani. Um, and I, can, I guarantee you the Prophet Muhammad was about Pakistan. I, I can guarantee you that. He was not born in Pakistan. He wasn't born in India, all right? Mm-hmm. Um, so he was, he was an Arab. The Arabs... They wore thobes and things of that nature. They did not wear shawl I can guarantee yeah. you that. So, and, and uh, the actual shawal that um, yeah. the closest thing that that the people during the time were supposed some would wear that was like that would be considered their like underclothes or pajamas. They wouldn't actually yeah. wear that outside like that. Um, yeah. Let's see. And the whole thing about not wearing jeans that he prescribed to his community, right? Yeah. Um, and when my mother was overseas, right, and they're like, okay. People in the Jamaat guys cannot wear jeans, right? Guess, guess whose kids will wear jeans? Guess who's <laughs> guess you, you can guarantee you that's your five. So tying all the niggas, guess what both they have on yep. jeans, jean jackets, all right? So, so and they would they would is, ask for it to be sent over, like on those trips. They would at request yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Yep. So this is just like sh- just coat stuff, and that just means that, that you're a coat. All right. Yep. That's that's basically what I mean. You're a coat. You can wear jeans. All right. Jeans are comfortable. They're cool. Uh, <laughs> you can wear jeans and you're a coat. Yeah. It's very simple. Um, Mike Russell said, uh, did, did he say they have countries in the Jamaat who exactly since, uh, TMOA, MOA, G- Jamaat al made up its own Dean that doesn't resemble the country whatsoever. Yep. That's exactly correct. So they just tried to hijack, um, the country Sufi order, um, and just put that name on themselves without actually being affiliated to actually the group at all. Um, did the person identify himself? Yes, that was Idris Nasir in the recording um, that we played. Idris Nasir. Um, let's see. Nothing but love and hatred towards Hindus. And yep, he tried, he tried to kill all the Hindus, Ahmadiyyas, and Jews. That, that, that was Jelani's all I came to bring is love. Um, let's see. Uncle said that the audio isn't clear. Yeah, we have a little technical issue, but we're going to upload a better video later. Um, has Barry Adams went public with a statement? Barry Adams is, uh, the last I heard is he got arrested or he got stabbed or something in Venezuela. Barry Adams is a nobody and he's not going to make any public statement whatsoever. Just like his son's not going to make any public statement. So whatsoever. And if he does, it's probably going to be some bull crap similar to what his, his son says, like, you know, the whole world's going to, you know, commit suicide if they don't join the Jamaat or some dumb crap like that. Um, let's see. Um, people are thinking about leaving TM away. Alhamdulillah. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. It's an American. It's not African American. Yes, we were born here. Um. Um. So they're just conversating at a point, a certain point. I think. Okay, well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's it. No more questions. I think we're good. Don't think so. Don't think so. Um, 
just for anyone who's, who's unaware, uh, we will be live on Thursday uh, for the Art Club show. Our Club show will be on Thursdays for probably like a month or two, uh, going forward. Um, but Jaffer and I may still do proper shows here and there if something arises. Uh, but the, the schedule is 9.30, uh, pop-up, uh, the Art Club show is 9.30 on Thursdays. So, okay. um, oh, yeah, but a question that please ask me before we uh, dip off into the day yep. or the night and go do our, our lives we have. <laughs> <laughs> go back to my non-life. Just go and think about TMOA all night. Oh, I, I can't to work wait. tomorrow, but I mean, I don't have a job. So <laughs> yeah. This is my job, actually. <laughs> um, we actually have an R2F interview on Thursday. So in two days, we're interviewing someone. So yeah. uh, there you go. And, and if you missed it, we interviewed Joffer, uh, which I don't know if that counts or not because he's just a host. So <laughs> it's like interviewing a little rocker me. So yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, we uh, interviewed Jopper. He has his his first part of his uh, story on uh, on last Thursday. And we interview someone else uh, this Thursday. So in two days, inshallah, we have an interview lined up. Um, and the people, and listen, if you want to get interviewed, we say this all the time. The Dark Talk Show is an open invite, all right? So you can be in the Jamaat, out the Jamaat, on the fence. We don't care. Yeah. Uh, if you want to come share your story uh, and not just like troll us, then please yeah. uh, come share your story. And uh, it will be beneficial for us and for you, inshallah. And, and depending on who you are and what your situation is, we could figure out a way to possibly keep you anonymous um, on the interview. I'm pretty sure there's some ways where we can uh, keep you blocked out and do some voice changing stuff if depends who you are we're not gonna we're, it depends on what the situation is like if you have a, if you have a valid reason for staying anonymous like you still live on the land or um something like that but um but yeah i don't know like if you're an administration like you're one of the like top dudes in islam but i might just say your name you said oh, uh, <laughs> oh, uh, oh sorry I, 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 <laughs> take the filter off their face like oh whoops <laughs> <laughs> oh, so far when we do another interview, um, it depends because um, other other the only reason why just so everybody knows the only reason why we're doing my interview, we're gonna we're gonna interview um brother Hanif J Williams again, um we're gonna also interview Mubarak. The only reason we're doing that is because we lost our content on the old channel, and we just want to make sure that that content's available for anybody that needs to go back and hear different things. So, um, interviews with people that we haven't talked to yet. Um, take priority over my interview because most people know my story. Um, but when time comes, when when an opportunity comes up, we'll do the part two, and if needed, we'll do like a part three. Um, there's a lot of different uh, stuff within my story because um, I want to cover up until like today the stuff that we deal with today. Like even like <laughs> you know uh, running into Muslims that go out of the, running into people from TMOA that go out of their way when they're by themselves to like give me salams and shake my hand and whatever. But then when they see, when they see me in public, when it was the other, another TMA member, like I'm the side chick and they like try to ignore me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, what guys get yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So inshallah, I mean, throughout the summer, inshallah, we'll be, we'll be getting all those interviews in, but you know, cake pie, you know, when are you going to come on the show? You've been in the I'm comments. Say, don't don't think on us, Dan. All right, listen. I promise you, nothing's happening to you if you come on the show. All right. I said this before. I've I've done the interview. Josh has done an interview. Lucy's has done an interview. Like these people live like we live near near the, the Jamaat, right? These mm-hmm. like th- these niggas aren't gonna do it from you. All right. Because they already said before, like, oh, if, if you're um, part of the Jamaat, you don't even have to believe in like uh, um, in the Seventh Sultan anymore. Just you know, be part of the community. So. Yeah. All they care about at the end of the day, at this point, is just your money. All right. Yeah. So, uh, you come, you come. If they kick you off your mind, that's good for you because guess what? Uh, you're free. Yeah. Mashallah. Oh yeah. It's a blessing. I, well, I guess we should remind the people of this too: is that um, if you are in a situation where you're um, kind of stuck, maybe financially or um, physically, like maybe like you're stuck on the land and you can't leave because you have nowhere to go. Um, we do have um, resources available to people that qualify and actually do need it um, to help them actually leave TM away and leave the cult. So if you're one of these people that need real assistance, we have, we're, we're working on the applications and there'll be verifications. All that. We're not just going to be handing out assistance. Um, but 
the said there, there are some resources there for you. So people should know that. And it doesn't come with any strings attached. All it comes with is that you have to, uh, one of the, one of the main conditions is that you have to actually deny the teachings of Mubarak Jelani and the seven Sultan and that sort of thing. So um, just keep that in mind, right, depending on what your situation is. And uh, one more thing, I think that the cover this maybe last week, but we forgot about it. Uh, was like someone, someone was making the idea of like our stuff is like begging for members and stuff like that. That that's not uh, a truthful statement at all. It would always be nice to have uh, more hands aboard, uh, but in reality, like this this whole like show and things, right? Um, we pretty much have it down to a science, right? Mm -hmm. um, and generally, like more hands in a kitchen is a bad thing, all right? Yeah. Uh, so. At this point, like, not saying we don't, we, we couldn't, like, we would love to have people here, but like, um, we can cook the, the meals ourselves, <laughs> all right? So, um, we're not like in the need for someone to come join and help us out. We have a good core group, um, and everyone does their part, uh, and uh, we get things things done. So it's not like we're we're we're, we're just paying for members. I mean, that's just not a, a narrative that uh, people just put out there because it's simply just not true. Yeah, um, we get the job done. Yeah, we we want you to join the UMA. Go to your local masjid, join them. <laughs> Most important thing, we're not, we're not starting our own jamaat. Um, there was a, a question asked about maybe a year ago. It was like, if if all things, you know, just went back to normal um, and, and, and they left this shirt, would you go back to the land? No, they not. Like, like no. I, I, I'll no. never go to I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah. that's the last thing I wanted to say. Yeah. Uh, you know, sad. All right. I think that's it. Uh, Amri, you want to close this out? Alright, um, <laughs> <laughs>